Uh, let's see, HTMAX is a library that allows you to access modern browser features directly from HTML rather than using JavaScript. To understand HTMAX, first, let's look at an anchor tag. Okay, so I actually have no idea anything about HTMAX. I know nothing about it, but I am very excited to kind of understand this journey because I keep seeing it. The, the account of HTMAX is the greatest memer account currently on tech Twitter. So very exciting. This anchor tag tells uh, a browser, Welcome hey, thank you very much. I love hey, you. Thank you very much. RB Bezerra. All right. When a user clicks on the, this link, issue an HTTP GET request to slash blog, load the response content into the browser window. With that in mind, the following bit of H, uh, HTML. All right. Trigger on click, target, this, this div, swap, outer HTML. Okay. I don't know what the, okay. I think I kind of get what they're saying right there. This tells HTMX when a user clicks this button, issue an HTTP POST request. Oh, yeah, because it says POST right here. Okay. Uh, request a uh, to click and use the content from the response to replace the element with the ID parent div in the DOM. Okay. Okay. TJ, you didn't have to do a dollar, dog. You can just tell me. You just you can link it. <sighs> Fine, TJ. What is this about? I'll cave to pressure. Here we go. I know I got a brand new. Oh, I saw that blue lid back there. Milk right here. We're going to crack it open fresh. Okay. okay. You'll never believe what happens next. Ooh, ooh, good. Okay. Here we go. Nani? for getting my uh i just literally got dmca tj i'm gonna turn this off thank you for dmcaing me though damn it tj damn it tj all right tj you gotta let me know these things it's game music it's fine is it it did not. They they always are trying to get that. TJ, damn it, TJ. You're trolling me with that. Well, I'll let it go. Okay. Anyways, we're back in. We're back in. He should give you one dollar to make up. He uh, yeah. TJ, you're lucky you gave me one dollar, or else I, then I'd be upset. All right, here we go. We're gonna keep on going. HTMX extends and generalizes the core idea of HTML as a hypertext opening up many more possibilities directly within the language. Now, any element, not just anchors or forms, can issue a HTTP request. Interesting. Why would we want to do that? I don't know. Now, any event, not just clicks or form submissions, can trigger requests. Okay. Now, any HTTP verb, not just get and post, can be used. Now, any element, not just the entire window, can be a target for an update request. Does it have history built in? I'm curious about that. Oh, that wasn't loud at all. Welcome oh, to music Costco. is a bit loud. You're right. You're you. right. I should have it right around here. This is typically where I have it. Hey, who just did that? Trench Toaster. This is two times in a row, my friend. This is Trench Toaster. Sir Trench Toaster, thank you for the 50 gifties. Okay? That is a lot of giftings, and I appreciate that. Many appreciations. Okay? Firm handshakes. Can Hey, can somebody go find him a brand new MacBook to throw out of the window? I would love to just get him a new one. Let it be tossed clean out the window just for him. One more hot do doge? Yeah. Let's do that. Let's do that. I feel like that's that's proper, right? That's a proper thing. Right? Thank you, Welcome Mad Dog. Uh, do I we throw you. think pads? Yes, we throw think pads as well, too. Yeah, I'm almost at 100K on, on uh, this. HTMX doesn't look very readable. Uh, I, I, I hate that. I hate that statement in general. Readability is just familiarity. That's all readability is. There's like very few languages in which readability actually isn't a real thing. That's C++. This goes out to the primitive. And brain f Like that's it. That, that's those two. Trench Toaster again. Thank you. Radioactive PB. Thank you for the 10. A pr many appreciations. Uh, many appreciations. Okay. So we got this one. So it's worth mentioning that. I really do appreciate it. I want to learn this, though. Can we just learn this? I do many, many appreciate. Uh, let's see. If you use d data prefix when using HTMX. Okay. It's worth mentioning that if you prefer, you can use the data prefix. Okay. Installing. HTMX is a dependency-free browser-oriented JavaScript library. This means that 
uh, using it as simple as adding a script tag to your document head. No need for complicated build step systems. If you're migrating HTMX from intercooler.js, please see the migration guide. Okay, via CDN. Okay. Welcome to Costco. Okay, let's I go to you. GitHub. Hey, thank you. I love you, baby. Coming in here with that sweet the Android theory. Thank you very much. 24 months. Did you see that? 24 months. Okay, real talk. I don't actually love you. Okay, I don't know you. Um, I think it's weird when people actually legitimately be like, I love you. Oh, daddy, I love you. Uh, but I really do appreciate it. You know, gen, genuine. You guys have made the dream come true for me, and I do not know why. But, you know, just letting you know. You know, you, you, you see people say that crap, right? You know. You know what I'm saying. Welcome to Costco. I love uh, you. What is it? It's uh, user uh, bin. Uh, no. And uh, nice try. Nice try, jackass. Trying to come in and come at me with that. Yeah, right. Uh, let's go like this. Um, I'll go like this. Uh Python 3 simple server. I always forget it, but I know there's a dash M in there. And make it happen. There we go. Bam. So I'm just going to serve that, but I want 16, uh, I want 420, 69. There we go. Let's go. I love you, but only at Costco. That's fair. That's fair. Index.html. Uh, Ooh, that's HTMM. Uh, Index.html. Okay, so we're just going to... We're just going slow on this guy, right? We're not doing anything fancy. We're just going, uh, is that a prime number? I don't even know what the hell you're trying to say. Is, shouldn't there be some sort of doc a doc type up here? Not, <laughs> nice one. All right, give me the HTML. Hell yeah. Uh, yeah, okay, okay. I, I don't think I need that quite yet. What is it? Is that how you do a comment? I'm pretty sure that's how you do a comment, right? All right, so we're going to want to go like this. Let's go uh, pap that bad boy in. We are now officially... We are now officially official body uh oh whoa 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 Why, what happened can i not type today uh body yeah apparently i can't type whoa i'm way off all right there we go and do i need anything else i need that html tag don't i am i putting this at the wrong side no i don't think i am uh div uh i don't know hello so we'll start here it's always divs all the way down by the way there we go. So we got it. Everything's looking good. Uh, I don't have Emmet or any of those things. I never use... I, do, I don't type enough HTML to actually need something like Emmet or some shit. So I guess I don't. How is Vim faster than uh, VS Code? Uh, so I'm sure if I had Emmet in there, it'd be great. I don't care. You, you need a header! This, is, this, is this accessibility? What is this? Oh, I, where's TypeScript? Um, hold on. So we trade type safety for inline JS that we can't minify. Uh, I don't think that's what's happening here. I know. See, I know this man doesn't need the type 2x. He could do dot head or do, do, do plebs. Please excuse me. This is not semantic. Okay, here we go. Anyways, download a copy. Okay, we don't need to do that yet. An option. An option. Because we're probably going to want a little bit of JavaScript, my guess. So maybe we want, like, the whole thing in there, build one single thing. Uh, NPM style, nice. We can do a a HTMX. Or we can do uh, Webpack. If you're using Webpack to manage your JavaScript, you can do it this way. Okay, we got some AJAX. The core of a uh, HTMX is a set of attributes that allow you to issue AJAX requests fr uh, directly from HTML. Okay. This is great. So there we go. So we, got, we, got our, we have our verbs. Fantastic. Uh, each of these attributes takes a URL to issue an AJAX request to. The element uh, will issue a request of the specified type to a given URL when the element is triggered. Okay, I'm not exactly sure how that happens. This tells the browser, when the user clicks on this div, issue a put request to the URL messages and load the response into the div. Okay, I wonder how it does deduping. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? By the way, Come on, can we? Can, you gotta get a little bit better. You got you gotta get a little bit more funny than this, okay? Can we? Can we get a, just a t honey hole? Can you get a little bit better than this, okay? A little bit more funny. Uh, yeah, I know. No custom verbs. I know. How are we gonna do this? Wh what happened if I? What happened if I want to return a two hundred that underneath the hood tells you you have a five hundred? Okay. What happened if I want something like graph queel? Okay. Hello from Dirty Mike and the Boys. Okay. Hello, Dirty Mike and the Boys. Let's go. Is HTML Turing complete now? No. 
Yeah, I know. I don't either. I, I don't use graph quill. I know. All right. Uh, by default, Ajax requests are triggered by the natural event of the element. Input, text area, select are all triggered on the on change event. Form is triggered on the on submit event. Everything else is just a click event. Okay. If you uh, want different behavior, you can use HTX, or HX trigger attribute to specify this. Okay. 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 Interesting. Interesting. I wonder what it sends up. What, like, how do you specify what you want to send? I'm curious what you're sending here. Right? Like, I, there must be a way that you also can put in extra information. Because, look at that. Trigger once. Okay, that's kind of cool. You can also trigger a few additional modifiers that change its behavior. For example, if let's see, if you want the request to only happen once, you can use this once modifier. Okay, very cool. Very cool. I, I mean, I'm liking it. Um, what's the worst part? It sends uh, all named inputs. We'll find out what it does. I, I have no idea. If you have the attribute on the form, it sends the uh, the form inputs. Okay. Isn't this just a, a declarative PJAX? Thanks for the F-Shack. No problem, baby. Any day of the week. All right. I don't like this song, but I really do like this other song lately that I've just been loving. I've just been riding this song in my brain all the time. It's by Bad Computer. All right. Let's see if I just go to YouTube.com if it will just bring it up. Let's see. Um, I'm not seeing it, which is which is deeply disappointing. Google, I figured that you do better, so I'll just click on a chain smoker song. I like chain smokers. Okay, we'll have to just make this work. All right. Anyways, uh, what is HTML trying to solve? It's trying to solve the insanity that is web dev, right? Like you you got to understand that when you use something else, you got to remember the hundreds of thousands of lines that actually happen for you to do these things. Okay, so perhaps we'll just see what it's doing. You know, I want to see it, okay? Because it's between, in my head, I have three possibilities. I have HTMX, SolidJS, Svelte. I, the reason why I love SolidJS is signals, but at the exact same time, I'm not a huge fan of it. Bundle size is like 5K or some nonsense. It's it's really small. So it's really it's really coming down to Svelte or uh, Svelte or uh, HT, uh, HTMX. Uh, HTMX is uh, the opposite, effectively, of a framework. Uh, Svelte doesn't support hooks. You don't need hooks. I know this might be difficult to understand, but, you know, you got to remember that your brain optimizes for a way of thinking. And then when you see something that's different... You try to fit the different into your paradigm, and then you go, well, that doesn't work because I need hooks to do X. And that's a huge problem. You should always go into something and say, how are you solving the problem? What is? What do you suggest? I want to see what you do. Up, oh, hold on one second. Beautiful wife looking at me. Hold on. Sorry. We just had a, we had a little incident earlier on in the day. Not me and my wife, but just... You know how things go when you when you have a lot of stuff? She just needed the hug. So I gave her, and I was just like, baby, and I whispered something sweet in her ear. I was like, HTMX solves the web better. And she got goosebumps. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? You know, you know what I mean. Um, anyways, submissive husband. I'm not a submissive husband. Okay? I am not submissive. I'm a tentative. They're very different. Everybody knows the difference, okay? I am not, I am, I am not, uh, I'm not, uh, uh, what's it called? Like, a, a passive individual. I don't shirk responsibility. I strive for being responsible. Not a cuck. You're a cuck. <laughs> Ain't no cuck, boy. Um, anyways, Ajax, the core of HTMX is the attributes that allow, wait, hold on, I feel like we've read this, triggering requests, yep, we've did this, triggering modifiers, yep, we've talked about this, Welcome to hey, Costco. thank you very much, I, I think every you. time I do that, it scrolls, so sorry, whether or not you want to use, a, let's see, you still have islands of rich interactivity, or you want to do, uh, build apps JSON client-side frameworks, yeah, I think there's something cool here, proactive husband, exactly, exactly, um, let's see, okay, so there's some cool stuff here, ooh, look at this, that's cool, this is cool, okay, let's see, uh, changed only issue a request if the value of the element has been changed like this is a great set of base utilities delay 
Wait the given amount of time, i.e. one second, before issuing the request. If the triggers, again, the countdown is reset. Cool. So that would be uh, debounce. Nice. Uh, debounce, what? Debounce trailing edge. Uh, throttle. Okay. Wait a given amount of time, i.g. one seconds, before issuing the request. Unlike delay, if a new event occurs before the uh, time limit is hit, the event will be discarded, so the request will be triggered at the end of the time period. Yes. Okay. Cool. Uh, let's see. From CSS selector, listen for an event on a different element. This can be used for things like keyboard shortcuts. Hmm. Very cool. Very cool. So I, I kind of like some of these things. I, I, I feel like I could see why people like that. Hmm, HTML will get very messy when combined with the uh, with Tailwind. Yes, I do think that... Okay, so that is a good point, which is... What is the dangers of this? I I could see that. I could see uh I could see that who uh, who is HTMX for people who are tired of just the insanity that is current the current world right so it's either like I said Svelte or HTMX but the problem is is that you really do have to give something a try right like I saw someone in there one of you guys in chat was like oh, I went down and looked at it and I said no thank you no you got to try it out you got to try it out because you got to feel it right like unless if you feel it unless if you believe unless if you yourself believe you can see into the future which I can't. I got to I got to test it out. You know what I mean? I got to I got to test it out. You know? Big div energy. Hell yeah. Is Twitch down? It sounds like you guys are all having problems with Twitch. I I am dropping no frames right now. So my guess is that we could be having a Twitch issue. Uh I don't need to try it. I looked at the validation example. I hate the syntax. Okay. That's I mean that's See, again, you you are the type of person with with whom comes in with a predefined set of what needs to happen and when you don't like something you say no i get it i get it me personally i try new things because just because i hate it doesn't necessarily mean it's not better and i just have to simply get used to a different paradigm i'm that kind of person i like to explore and truly understand what's happening before i get all loosey-goosey uh, all right, triggering events. You may also apply filters by square brackets uh, after the event name, closing the JavaScript expression that will be evaluated. If the expression evaluates is true, the event will be triggered. Otherwise, it will not. Here's an example of triggers uh, only on control click of a key. Okay. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Uh, property like control key will resolve against the triggering event. Okay, interesting, interesting. Uh, I wonder if this is... I wonder if these are strictly named properly or if you can provide key codes or like what what is it what does it look like? Don't refresh. One of the Twitch categories has 3.3 million viewers. Really? Damn. Um uh, HTMX provides a few special events for HT or HX trigger. Load fires once the element is first loaded. Reveal fires once an element scrolls into the viewport. Intersects fires once an element uh first intersects the viewport. Let's see, this supports the two options. Root, selector, a CSS selector of the root element interaction. Threshold, a floating point number between 0 and 1, indicating the amount of intersection to fire on the event. This, this is a pretty cool set of like little primitives right here. Just kind of thinking through some issues that I've dealt with throughout my time building stuff. This is actually a pretty cool... Cool, cool thing, right? Cool idea. You can also use custom events to trigger a request if you have an advanced case. Polling. If you want an element uh, to pull the given URL rather than wait for an event, you can use every syntax with HT trigger. All right. Trigger every two seconds. Okay. Get news. Okay. Interesting. This tells HTMX every two seconds issue a get request to news and load the response into the div. If you want to stop polling from the server, let's see. If you want to stop polling from a server response, you can also respond with an HTTP response code 286 and the element will cancel polling. Oh, yeah. What is it? 86 term. 86 or 86 in American slang. Oh, interesting. Oh, cool. So the uh, 286. What is the group of two, uh, 200s are successes in HTMX? So a 286 would be successfully stop. How do I feel about that? I know it's a bar thing. I worked, dude, I know. I'm saying 86. Like I, I 86 is also anime? No, it's most certainly not anime in this case. This is most certainly a reference to working in a, in the restaurant industry. It's not a bar specific. It's actually just a restaurant term, right? How do I feel about that? One thing I don't like is it's not, I don't think that's an official, official response code, but it's kind of, it's kind of neat. It's kind of neat. 
right? There's kind of there's something there that I like about it. Why not 226? I don't see. I don't know the response codes well enough. H T H T H T T P response 226. What is a 226? I'm used. Oh, baby, that's me all over the place. Status code is set by the server to indicate that returning a delta to the get. Oh, this is just a delta. Okay, it's more like uh, it's more like a wanted stop. In other words, yeah, yeah, exactly. Axel, I get that. It's definitely teapot or bust. Four eighteen. All right. Anyways, okay. So I'm not. I'm not. I'm not upset about any of this. It just seems interesting. Another technique that can be used to achieve polling in HTMX is load polling, where an element specifies a load trigger along with a delay. A let's see, and replaces itself with a response. Okay. If the messages endpoint keeps returning a div uh, set up this way, it will keep polling. Uh, oh. Oh, that's kind of interesting. That's confusing and interesting. All at the exact same time. I'm not really sure what to think about that. But it is interesting. So apparently Twitch is having issues, and the issue is because somebody has 3.3 million viewers. Damn, that's not that ain't me. Um, okay, so wait, so we are expected to return documents? Yeah. So it, it, let's see, is HTMS all about network requests? It seems to solve different issues than uh, S. Like, uh, yeah, it seems a little bit different. It's time for kick. What the heck? No issues in Germany. Well, let's just keep on going. Request indicators. When AJAX request is issued, it is often good to let the users know that something is happening uh, since the browser will not give any feedback. You can accomplish this by using HTMX indicator class. The indicator class is defined so that the opacity of an element with the class is zero by default, making it invisible but present in the DOM. When HTMX issues a request, it will put HTMX request on the class onto the element, either the request requesting element or another element if specified. The HTMX request class can uh, cause a child element with the HTMS indicator class on it to transition to an opacity of one, showing the indicator. Mm. Mm. Okay. Okay, so this is just like basic state management. Okay, I see that, that's interesting. Well, it's cool in the sense that when you put this on here, it's an invisible item, right? Whatever this is, this is invincible, right? The moment you, the moment this thing gets activated, this becomes visible. Black screen without audio, damn. Uh, so let's see, here we have a button. When it is clicked, the HTMX request class will be added to it with the revealed spinner GIF element. Okay, I like uh, s savage spinners these days. Okay, while the HTMX indicator class uses opacity to hide and show the progress indicator, if you would prefer another mechanism, you can create your own CSS transition like so. Okay, okay. Okay, I like that. If you want HTMX request class added to different elements, you can use HTMX indicator attribute with the CSS selector uh, to do so. Uh, let's see. Interesting. Okay, do you see what's happening here? So, okay, how broke are we right now? We're working on it. I can't see the stream, but everyone is scaling. Yeah. Twitch divs it never got that. Okay, so for those that can hear, it's kind of interesting idea. Wow. Okay, you guys are all broken. Apparently, so what's happening apparently is that twitch.tv... Someone on here is having 3.3 .3 million viewers. Yes. Okay, so 
That's what's happening. I buy is having some sort of Spanish fighting event. And it's attracted the world. Look at this. I've been in the wrong profession this whole time. I'm over here. I'm over here trying to do educational content when I should be punching people in the face. Am I just taking the wrong thing? Should I go Conor McGregor on this? You're just streaming in the wrong language. Is that it? I don't think I like that song. Yes, yes to that. Okay, I'm going to dev box fight. Let's go. Uh, Melky beats everybody else up. The problem is I just don't want to get punched in the face by Melky. I think I'd be fine getting punched by everybody else but Melky. I think I could take everybody else but Melky. Real talk, I think I could beat up all other dev streamers. Except Melky. Trash dev? I think trash dev would literally pull a hammy getting into the boxing ring. Why well, I wouldn't just I, I I guess I'd lose to Bash Bunny because I I can't punch a girl. That would be completely inappropriate. That would be completely inappropriate. You versus Dax would be interesting. Dax would be a hard fight. I think Dax Dax might be a harder fight. Just keep refreshing what they told you not to do. What's so special about Melky? Uh, he fights. He likes fighting. Theo, Theo's tall, but I work out a lot, and I'm in really good shape. So long as I can just, long as I can, you know, get up the arms and get a couple blocks, by the time you're 30, 40 seconds into fighting, you're going to want to vomit if you're not in spectacular, spectacular shape. And so guess what? Since I'm in significantly better shape, I'm going to be able to I'm going to be able to last for 30 seconds, 40 seconds. Stryker, yeah, I think I, I think I could take him too. Uh, yeah, Theo's hair would be the weakness in his fight because they're going to be like, hey, you need to protect your head. Here you go. This is true. That's why, uh, Zantil, that's why I sprint on a Jacob's ladder. Uh, Jacob's ladder. This is, this is fighting equipment. Jacob's ladder... There you go. I have one of these in my house. So I, I sprint up this thing, the forever ladder. So I do that for one minute to one minute and 15 seconds. It's, it's actually one of the worst workouts in the universe. It makes you want to vomit so hard. If I go for one minute and 30 seconds, I think I would actually vomit. Mine was it. I bought mine used. I bought mine used. I bought my news. But if you go one minute and 30 seconds on this thing, full speed, 180-ish feet per, se uh, per minute, you will vomit. Hands down. I could, yes, I could, I could leverage the power of rust and beat him up. Yep. It's called a hill. These are different than hills because you have to use your arms too. It is worse than running hills. It is definitely worse than running hills. It's like a whole different thing. It's it's just awful. I I've actually almost vomited using it. <laughs> You'll just vomit. Is there a catch tray for bigger chunks of last night's dinner? Probably. I almost vomited when I did some some rowing. Yeah, rowing is also another one of those. Where do your arms go? Your feet go down here. Your arms go down here, and you tie a string to you that has a weight that releases the brake. It's that simple. All right. All right, so anyways, targets. Okay, so I feel like I kind of get some things. So maybe it's... Most attributes in HMX are inherited. Uh, they apply to the element they are on as well as to any children. This allows you to hoist attributes up to the DOM to avoid code duplication. Considering the following HMX. Delete. Confirm. Are you sure? Account. Confirm. Are you sure? Are you sure? This. Hmm. I'm unsure how I feel about that. I love the concept. I'm unsure how I feel about it. 
HMX confirm attribute will now apply to HMX powered elements within it. Sometimes you wish to undo inheritance. Consider we had the cancel button in this group, uh, but didn't want to confirm it. We could add an unset. Okay. Okay, I'm not upset about it yet. Boosting. All right, so I kind of want to play a little bit with this. I want to play a little bit with it. See how see how it goes. I want to I want to do a little. I want to go look at an example or two. Okay. Click to edit. What am I clicking? Oh, there he goes. I was like, what the heck's going on here? Uh, let's see. Uh, to click to edit, let's see. The click to edit pattern provides a way of offering inline editing of all parts of a record without a page refresh. This pattern starts with the UI that shows the detail of the contact. The div ha let's see, has a button that will edit the UI for contact from slash contacts one edit. Okay, let's look at this. So I don't understand this. We didn't look at this target thing. Uh, HTS swap, auto HTML. Okay, so we have first name Joe, last name Blow, email joeblow.com, get contact edit. Okay, we're going to do an one class button primary click to edit this returns a form that can be used to edit the contact oh i think i see Okay. Okay. How do we get the slash one? This is just like if you had the sir if you had that information coming down, right? Right? Kind of impressed it can do with that to be honest. I, I, I totally get kind of what's happening here. Okay. I wonder how useful this would be. I wonder how this. I wonder how this application scales. Oh, the form. Where'd you get the uh, form from? Right here. So if you look right here, it says uh, you go right here. So you go to this endpoint to generate the HTML that you want, and then it's the form is returned from the endpoint like this, and then you can take that. It will automatically get inlined, right? Because you did this right here. When we did this, Welcome to Costco. we got the edit, you. thank you very much, and we swap out the HTML right here. And the HTML got swapped out to become this, and then when we're done, we call contact1, and contact1 will return something that looks like this. I get it. Okay, so... Oh, why, uh, when you mark text, you always skip. I, I always do. I like it. Looks neat. If you have to do SSR, I don't mind having this. It's, it's just kind of interesting in the sense that, okay, so what I see right away is that you have to rely on less things. H, uh, HX, uh, let's see, HX target sets the target for the swap. Yes. Yes, I saw that. So this is the thing that swaps, right? So this div will be swapped. So this gets swapped right here for this. And then, then when we click this, again, what gets swapped, right? Or it's, it's it's not that this gets swapped. This gets swapped for this. Is that what I did? I get that correct? Is it the it's the outer? It's it's the div included, right? This sounds like a recipe for spaghetti code. I'm curious if it is, because it also sounds like this. One thing that I see very strong with this is that it seems like it's very, 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 very... Yeah, I saw this. I think this is very, very good. Mark wrote this. Mark is a very talented person, 
And honestly, I don't think Welcome his, his implementation is not like you. this is exactly how you do it without any frameworks. And it's not it's like an exceptionally simple thing. Like you look at it and you go, oh, I understand how this works. It's actually pretty it's it's actually pretty clever how this all works. And it's really, really, really easy to understand. I think sometimes people get really intense into. Sounds like uh, seems like Ajax hype again. Yeah, I mean, well, we're still in Ajax hype. We just hide it behind many, many things. I mean, a TRPC is just Ajax. That's all it is, right? You'd have to have a set of UI components that you map on on server side, I guess. Yeah, so that's the question I, I'm curious about. How does this all work? Is it is it actually good? Yeah, so that's, I mean, that's my big question, which is, to me, what I see right here is that, yeah, of course, HTMX has its limitations. React, I mean, yeah, React is literally, all these things use, a, you know, fetch or Ajax underneath the hood. They use some sort of requesting to go get stuff. They just hide it. Like the new React server components, you hide the requesting by determining what is on the client versus what is on the server. The requests are all still there, right? Nothing changes. The only thing that changes is that when requests happen are no longer you specified, but how the shape of your tree looks and how much can be rendered on a single pass, right? So if you don't have the correct rendering, you may find yourself doing N plus one requests very, very easy. Hypermedia as the engine uh, engine application and state. Yeah. So do I think this is great? I don't know if I think this is great. Do I think this is interesting? Yeah, I think it's interesting. Yeah, you're just hiding. You have a JS client as well. Yeah. This one, I mean, everything is choosing to hide something. To go through more examples, so they make it a lot clearer. Yeah, this, well, this one was already very clear what was happening here, and I really liked this example. I actually like this example a lot. Because um, this, for me, this felt very, very obvious. How I think of HTMX as of right now is that you'd have a you, it's really it's designed for more of a restful server, right? This part of your app requests this thing, right? And so your server can generate a bunch of stuff and you can do those little requests. So a to-do MVC would be very interesting to build. I've never built a to-do MVC. I don't even know all the requirements for to-do MVC, but it seems like it'd be a very interesting to, thing to build. This is a weird playlist. Is it web scale? Yeah. So your request will only be made. Yeah, but I think someone said a really good point, which is validation. Because client side validation is nice. Can we all agree client side validation is nice? But to be 100% fair, the thing I hate about Welcome client side validation, I, I love you, you uh, is that client side validation requires that if you have a server that's not written in the identical language, being able to even use the same everything you have to write validation twice so i understand why server-side validation is really really nice exclusive server-side validation right Cli client-side validation is trash client-side validation is really really annoying but the question then becomes can we do requests that based on like say the http status code like let's just say that when you tried to submit a form it returned a 500. Can I direct a 500 response into a specific HTML element? If I can do that, then this is really cool. Because if I can make form validation work across here, that would be super cool. Can we agree with that? Right? Yes, you can. Okay, because then you can kind of be like, okay, I'm building this element. We do this. And so then it really, what this, what I'm seeing about HTMX is that it really just puts the server as the one that drives everything. You just build a server. You don't really think much about the client. You only think about the client via CSS. Which I think is cool. I can, I can get behind that. I can get behind that. I'm not saying it's perfect. I don't know how well it scales. I think that there's a lot of, a lot of questions about how well does something scale like this. Like, could you build Netflix with HTMX? Maybe? Right? Maybe I can't say yes or no to that because the problem is, is that 
Uh, hey, thank you. By the way, and Pendu, thank you very much for the uh, sub. I know people say yes. You can ha you can hack NASA with XML. Damn. Uh, you can't build Netflix with any single language. This is actually the most true. Well, but it's, can I build Netflix with this tool? You obviously can't build anything. Yeah, this song is a banger. It's Chainsmokers. Chainsmokers are awesome. Only if you're an HTMX engineer. All right, so I think what this means is that I now know kind of what HTMX is. So I guess the next thing we should try is that we should try to build something. Oh, inline validation. Awesome. This is super cool too. I got a piece so bad. I'll be right back. I'll be right back. I think I could like HTMX. Arr! How much could I like it? That I don't know. By the way, MF uh, m m motherfucker uh, Kaskin, thank you very much. Appreciate that. And Trickfoot, thank you. You have to try out the HTMX WebSocket stuff. It's so sick. Okay, I'll try that out. And Kupau, thank you very much. Uh, many appreciations. Tokyo, thank you, bamboozled. Bap boozled. What is HTMX? We've been going over it for the last little bit. All right, so I told I, I I told my family I'd only be streaming for one hour. We're at one hour and eight minutes, so it is time for me to get done with this. But I really do like this a lot, and so I would say that what I would like to do with HTMX is I would like to take it and build something. Because uh, the problem is, is I really love Leptos, so this could be a great moment for Leptos. Right, so Rust Leptos is in fantastic. You could build a Rust server with Leptos and build out this really cool experience, and it just like works, right? Like this thing could just work. You could have your entire, you could have your entire like server be a server that's just like insanity fast, right? Man, so it'd be fun. Leptos uh, 05 will be amazing without uh, passing CX around. Oh, I didn't even know about this. I don't even know about this. So I think that that is a really cool, very exciting thing.